this video we're going to talk about undefined expressions and the question that you'll get on the GED test is for which value or values of X is this expression undefined and there's really going to be probably two types of problems that you're going to encounter related to this uh, one is going to be uh, in fractional form where you're going to have an undefined fraction and the other will be a square root in which you will have a negative square root and that's what means undefined. So uh, we're going to take those one at a time and I will tell you you're going to want to watch the algebra videos. Um, if you are not familiar with algebra this question is going to be uh, difficult for you so I suggest that you go to the videos link on the Facebook page, go to the uh, playlists and you might have to hit the, the show more button a couple of times to bring up the algebra playlists and you'll have to um, watch all of those videos I would recommend. There's probably two or three key ones in there um, but in order to do these you're definitely going to need to know how to do algebra. So the first uh, way that something is undefined at least for the GED test is by having a fraction in which there's a zero in the denominator. So remember that fractions are just divisions and so it's you know two divided by zero or numerator divided by denominator and you can't divide by zero. I mean it, it doesn't make sense and in math we call that being undefined. So you can't have a zero in the denominator of a fraction. For, for the GED test, we really don't care what's in the numerator. What's making something undefined is if there is a zero in the denominator. And so how you're going to see these problems will be something like, it will say, you know, for which values of x is this undefined? So you, and they might give you a fraction that looks something like this. And so all you need to do is figure out when does this denominator equal zero. When that equals zero, then this expression is undefined because you can't have zero in the denominator. And so when you have this fractional question, just forget about the numerator. And all we're going to focus on is the denominator. And so when the denominator, which is 3 plus x, equals 0, that's undefined. Because if this equals 0, we're going to have 4 over 0, and that's an undefined expression. That's what we call something when there's 0 in the denominator. So this is an algebraic problem. Hopefully you can just look at this and, and see the answer. But again, you need to know how to solve these algebraically, so I'm not going to go through that here. Definitely watch the videos on algebra. Go to the algebra playlist and watch and watch them. So here, how do we solve this? We get rid of the 3 on each side and we end up with x equals negative 3. So that's the answer to this question. For which value of x is this undefined? Well, when x equals negative 3, this is undefined. So if we plug negative 3 into that x, we have 4 3 plus negative 3. 3 plus negative 3 is the same as 3 minus 3, so that equals 0. So since when x equals negative 3, we get a 0 in the denominator, that is the value that makes this expression undefined. We're going to do a couple more examples. 14x squared minus 2 over 3 plus x. So don't make this more complicated than it is. Again, when you see a question like this, forget about the numerator. Now if you're used to doing polynomials, um, you might know that sometimes you can factor the numerator and then cancel things out of the denominator. If you know how to do that, go for it and, and do it. But if that's you know, not something in your, in your knowledge base, just forget about the numerator, concentrate on the denominator. And so again, when does the denominator equal zero? And we just solve this problem. So the answer to this question is the same as the other. It's when does the denominator equal zero? X equals three. We don't care what's in the numerator. So don't 
let that bother you. It may look like a very complicated problem, okay? But again, when you see this, forget about the numerator. When does the denominator equal zero? And again, you need to know how to do algebra. I'm not going to explain that all here. We first get rid of the 14 on each side. So we have negative 2x equals negative 14. We divide by negative 2. x equals 7. So when x equals 7, we plug that in. 14 minus 2 times 7 is 14 minus 14, which equals 0. So when x equals 7, this fraction has a 0 in the denominator. If we plug 7 into that, you're going to get 0. So that makes this undefined. So again, just concentrate on the denominator, and when that equals 0, that's the answer to this question. Now I'll give you one that's a little bit more complicated. And this again, watch the videos on the playlist under Algebra about polynomials. So here, when we have these two things side by side, that means multiplication. So x times x plus 2. And so again, we don't care about the numerator. When does x times x plus 2 equal 0? So one thing you can do is multiply this out, use the quadratic formula, and figure out when it equals 0. Again, watch the, watch the videos if that didn't make sense to you. But the other way you can do this is just to maybe think a little bit logically, and you wouldn't have to go through that process. So when you multiply two things together, right, because this is representing a number, this expression is just representing a number, when you multiply two things together in order to get 0, one of them has to equal 0, right? So if you have 382 times 0, you're going to get 0. If you have 0 times 47, you're going to get 0. If one of the factors is 0, you're going to get 0. So if you think logically about this expression, when one of these equals 0, then, you're, then when you multiply them together, you're going to get 0, okay? So if one of these two numbers equals 0, then when you multiply them together, you're going to get 0. So what I'm saying is, if this number equals 0, then it doesn't matter what this number is, because 0 times this is going to give you 0. So that'll be an answer to this question. Similarly, if this expression, which represents a number, equals 0, then it doesn't matter what this number is, because when you multiply it by this, which is 0, you're going to get 0. So the answer to this question of when does x times x plus 2 equals 0 is going to have two answers to it. One is going to be when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, when you plug that back into this expression, you have 0, because x equals 0, times 0 plus 2, which is 0, times 2, is going to give you 0. So if x equals 0, and you plug that into this original fraction, you're going to have a 0 in the denominator. So that's what makes it undefined. So that's one answer to this question. The other time that this is going to be 0 in the denominator is if x plus 2 equals 0. So again, an algebra problem, hopefully you can just see the answer. But to do the algebra, we'll subtract 2 off of each side. x equals negative 2. So here, if we plug negative 2 into this expression, we'll have negative 2 times negative 2 plus 2. Just plug in negative 2 into this answer, or into that expression. So we have negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 
is 0. So for which values of x is this undefined? And this, I think, was a maybe a 3 or a 2. I can't remember now. But it doesn't matter what the numerator is. It's going to be undefined when x equals 0, because when we plug that in for x, we get a 0 in the denominator. Or when x equals negative 2, because when we plug negative 2 in for x, we get a 0 in the denominator. These are, by definition, undefined, because they're 0 in the denominator. Let's look at one more of these fractional problems. Let's say we have 18x over x plus 3 times x minus 4. So again, don't worry about the numerator. Just look at the denominator. When does x plus 3 times x minus 4 equals 0. So that's how you set the, pro the problem up. Set the denominator equal to 0. When does this equal 0? You can multiply these out and use the quadratic formula and find your answer that way. Or let's look at it just logically. So we know that if either x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0, we're going to get 0. Because if one of these is 0, and we multiply it by anything, we're going to get 0. So we're first going to say, OK, if x plus 3 equals 0, then that will be one answer. And if x minus 4 equals 0, if the other factor here equals 0, then we, when we multiply that by anything, we're still going to get 0. So then we do the algebra. I'm not going to do it here. x equals negative 3, x equals 4. So let's plug those in just to show. x equals negative 3, 18 times negative 3, negative 3 plus 3, negative 3 minus 4. OK? So we don't care about the numerator, but just for completeness, 18 times negative 3, negative 54. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0 times negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So we get negative 54 over 0 times negative 7 is 0, because 0 times anything is 0. That's the whole key to this problem. So we get a 0 in the denominator when x equals negative 3. So that's an answer to this question. Let's do when x equals 4. 18 times 4 over 4 plus 3 times 4 minus 4. 18 times 4 is 72. 4 plus 3 is 7 times 4 minus 4 is 0. 72, 7 times 0 is 0. So this fraction is undefined. So when x equals 4, this fraction is undefined. So again, you have two answers here. The key to these problems when you see a fraction is just look at the denominator, set it equal to 0, and then solve for x. The other type of problem you're going to get is you have to know that when we're dealing with real numbers, a square root cannot have a negative number in it. So if you don't know what square roots are, please watch that video on Facebook. So the square root of 49 is 7, or, or negative 7. But normally, in the GED test, we're, we're really just looking for the positive non number. But what is undefined for the GED test is, what's the square root of negative 49? That is undefined for our purposes. 
because you can't remember what a square root is, it's this number times itself gives you this number. Well, anytime you multiply two numbers together, um, that when you multiply a number by itself, you can't get a negative number. Because remember, if you multiply two negative numbers together, you're going to get a positive. When you multiply a positive number by itself, you're going to get a positive number. So we can't get a negative number. So, but all you really need to know is you can't have a negative number under the square root sign. That's really all you need to know. This cannot be negative. So when it says when is this for which values of x is this undefined and it gives you something like this you just look at what's under here what's under the square root sign and it has to be positive. Remember it cannot be a negative number. It can be 0. So it has to be positive or greater than or equal to 0 to be a valid number, right? So what's going to make it undefined is when this is less than 0. So if the expression under the square root symbol is less than 0, it's undefined. And so again, you just have an algebra problem. Here it now has an inequality sign, which sometimes can make the math a little bit different. And so watch the videos. But you just have an algebra problem that you need to solve. So for which values of x is this undefined? Anytime x is less than negative 3, this is going to be undefined. So let's take a number. What's a number that's less than negative 3? Let's say negative 10. So now we're just going to test the theory. Let's say x equals negative 10. We plug that in and we get negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7 you can't have a negative number under a square root sign so that's why this is undefined anytime x is less than negative three that's the answer to this problem you're gonna get a negative number under the square root which is undefined let's do one more so let's say they give you this problem 15x plus 9 when is this undefined Again, it's undefined, so this is just something you're going to have to memorize. It's undefined when this is less than zero. You cannot have a negative number under the square root sign, so you need to memorize this. You need to memorize for the first part of this video that it's, a fraction is undefined when the denominator equals zero, and a square root is undefined when the expression is less than zero. And again, we just have an algebra problem. Track 9 from each side, divide by 15 on each side, and then put this into lowest terms. If you don't know what that is, watch the videos on Facebook regarding fractions and lowest terms. So the answer to this question is x is less than negative 3 fifths. So again, the concept is actually pretty easy. When does the denominator equal zero in a fraction? When does what's ever under the square root, when is that less than zero? And so the real key to these problems is being able to do the algebra part of it. And that's the answer to this question.